Hey, Tactical Painter, back out here for Shop Talk Tuesday. Welcome back out to the shop. Today, I've got a couple of little different things here for you. We're going to actually do um, a little bit of a uh, demonstration. I figured I'd do a talk one shootist. Uh, one of my subscribers has been getting into wood turning. Really excited for him. He's getting into wood turning one shooters. Big shout out to you. Uh, welcome to wood turning. Uh, it's a trying process. Sometimes it can be kind of tough. And he's been having some hard times with Mylan's high friction build polish. So I've got a piece of cherry dowel here behind me that I am going to do a demonstration on how to use Mylan's high friction polish. At least the method that I use. You guys may have seen it in some videos. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on that here on the lathe. So come on, I'll flip you around here and we'll take a look at this. Okay, so I got this piece of cherry chucked up in here. I want to just do this demonstration real quick. I've got a guy, uh, one shootist, uh, is one of my subscribers, and he was using some of this um, Mylan's high build friction polish that uh, I've been using for a really long time, and uh, you know he's having some troubles with it. And so just wanted to get out here with you guys today, show you how I used to use it, and uh, if you guys want to use it, that's great. Uh, some tips and tricks. So I actually keep mine inside of a little tiny bottle. I don't know, there's something about using it out of a little bottle. Just makes it a little simpler when you shake it up. You don't have to shake as much and get it fully stirred. So just a quick little whip like that will shake up the entire contents. Um, putting it in that big bottle, you know, you really got to shake it in order to get it all stirred up and back to being homogenous. Um, but if you shake up that big bottle really, 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 really well um, and then put it inside this little bottle, then... Uh, when it settles out, you don't have to shake for as long or as much in order to get all this stirred back up. So that's tip number one. Tip two, denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is a godsend when it comes to um, using this stuff. You need to get your wood completely clean before you can do anything else. I use this uh, clean strip green denatured clean burning fuel alcohol uh, and it works extremely well for getting this clean. So what I've got here is I've just got a scrap of cherry block uh, that I, I had laying around in the shop you know waiting for something to come along like this and so I've got it turned down gave me an excuse to get out my uh, my skew chisel and practice with it a little bit because it's a tool that I don't use often enough and it's really a wonderful tool. If you don't have one, I recommend one. So I just turn this round and then I've got it sanded down just to 600 grit just for this demonstration. So we're going to clean this off first. Just a little bit of denatured alcohol on a blue shop towel and just get that all nice and clean. Gets all the dust off, all the grit and grime. You can kind of see the discolored section in the patch right there. And then let that fully dry before you go on to our next step, which is going to be sand sealer. Now the next stuff that I use is this Mylan Cellulose Sanding Sealer. Now again, this stuff can separate out, so you have to mix it really, really well. Um, and again, I recommend putting it into a smaller bottle and then label your bottle. So here I've got... Um, an amount of Mylan sand sealer mixed up in there. So you just mix that up real well and then we can get that sealed up. So again just a little blue shop towel and you don't need a whole lot. So I mean you can see my thumb there. Don't mind the fact that it's a little pink. I've got another project I'm working on for my daughter. So just just a little bit. I mean no bigger than your thumbnail for most pens and then you just wipe on with the grain and just spread that evenly around. Don't take too long because it's going to dry really fast and you don't want to add smears by going back and forth and rubbing that compound in and then your um, your sand sealer ends up gooping up and you add smear lines in it while it's dry. And you see it's already dry, it's already done. You can throw on a second layer if you want and your second layer needs even less, doesn't need as much because it's not going to absorb as much. So just a little bit. And then again wipe that on. Get it nice and even and then leave it alone. Let that set up 
and then you're ready for your high friction polish. Actually not a bad piece of curly cherry in there. Okay, so our last step is that Mylan's high friction build polish. And so just a little bit of this stuff, again, just like that much, I mean just, you know, dot of your thumbnail. You wipe that on with the grain. Always wipe it on with the grain. Get that in there. And then turn your lathe on. And I like to go about 2,000 to 2,500 RPM, just depending on the size of your piece. And then rub that in there and build up some friction. You need to build some friction because that activates the waxes and all that stuff that's in there. And that gets it going. Gets it to where it starts to brighten up and shine up. And there we have it. And you can do multiple layers of that if you want. We'll go, we can go ahead and do a second coat. Just grab a fresh section of towel here. Put another little dot on. A little more than that. There we go. Wipe that on. You can see that goes dull again. Then you just turn on the lathe. Buff that in. Build up some heat, some friction. And you can go slow, you can go fast going back and forth. What you're trying to do is just building up heat. So the slower you go, the more heat you're going to build in that one spot, and then you just kind of spread it across. There we have it. Nice, bright, beautiful piece of cherry there. You actually see some figuring right through here. Now, I don't like to leave it with just the Mylan's friction polish. I like to take some of this Renaissance wax afterward, use some of this stuff in order to. Uh, seal it in. This is micro crystalline wax polish. They use this stuff for um, resurfacing and protecting paintings that have been lost for a long time. Restoring paintings, old paintings, things like the Mona Lisa, stuff like that. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff for preserving, protecting things against fingerprints especially. This stuff is great for protecting against fingerprints. Um, you buff it on and it's got a solvent in there that dissolves or it evaporates away. Now once all that solvent has evaporated away, the wax that's on there is really, really tough. It's really durable and really strong and it lasts a very long time. So this is the wax on the inside and I just take a little blue shop towel again, fresh piece of blue shop towel, get a little bit on there like that. And we'll just wipe that on and then get rid of any and all clumps. You want a nice even coat of this stuff all the way across. And let that sit and evaporate. And you can smell in the shop. You guys can't smell over the over the camera, but you can smell in the shop. It's evaporating away. Those solvents are releasing into the atmosphere. It's hardening up. And then you just take a dry section of your shop towel. It doesn't have any of it on it. And we'll turn on the lathe and we'll buff it out. And that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to get rid of any excess wax. And it's going to buff and polish itself. Uh, because the it has microcrystalline in it, which degrades away and polishes as it comes off of the wood. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a, a shine, a little white haze in the cloth. That's that polishing compound. Then you flip over, get a fresh section of cloth, and this takes very light pressure. You do not need to press hard into this. You're letting the compound do the work for you. And there you go. I usually put on three coats of that, at minimum three coats of that, in order to give, build up a nice uh, protective layer on that wood. But you can see how nice that looks. Now, usually I would polish this through with my polishing sanding pads all the way through 12,000. This is just 600 grit, so this would be even 
prettier had I sanded and polished it all the way through. So you can see kind of some areas that aren't the best because this is just 600 grit. But uh, it does leave a nice finish. So that's the method that I use. There you go, one shootist. Here's going to you. So I hope that's helpful, one shootist. Uh, I figured I'd do that for you and let you see, you know, how that process is done. I mean, it's there can be some issues with that. You know, he was asking, like, you know, should I thin my my myelins out, put some denatured alcohol on it? Because the problem that he was having was that he kept getting these streaky lines all through the pieces of wood, and uh, they were really discouraging for him. He was having a hard time with it, so he reached out to me in the comments. You guys may have seen that. And uh, so I figured I'd show that and, and let you guys see how I do it. You know, there's a lot of issues that you can have with it. Sometimes you don't get it cleaned off well enough with a denatured alcohol. Um, your sand sealer isn't doing its job. Uh, too much compound on the blue shop towel will give you an issue as well if you put too much on there. Um, don't have your speed spinning fast enough and so it uh, you get a really uneven coat or not wiping on with the grain. If you apply directly on while it's spinning then you're going to get a really uneven coat and then all of that extra buildup compound is going to um, just kind of mash over itself and smear in and so that can be problematic. So I hope that's helpful. You can see how much I use. It doesn't take much. It's a very little amount when you're dealing with pens. When you're doing larger projects, you're going to use a lot more, like if you're doing bowls or platters or things like that. Um, but with just pens, I mean, just the size of your thumbnail. I mean, and of course, my thumbnails are bigger than other people's thumbnails. But, you know, um, you know, about the size of a nickel, you know, for your first coat. Second coat, you're looking at the size of a dime or even smaller, you know, just very, very little amount. So, um, but I hope that's helpful for you, one shootist. Happy turning. All right, other things that we're doing out in the shop today. I haven't had a whole lot of time out in the shop this week. Um, I've got some family and friends coming into town. My daughter's turning three, which is really exciting. We've been doing some stuff up for her. Um, I've actually uh, had to clean off my entire table saw because we're making a little project for her birthday. We're going to be making like a little mailbox for people to put their cards and stuff in. And so I've got that out here. Um, got some paint going on it. I, I, why don't I flip you on around? We can go out and take a look at that. So we've got this little mailbox and my daughter loves Pinkie Pie. And so we are painting this little tiny mailbox. It's not very big, so here's the size of my hand. So it's just this little tiny mailbox, just big enough to hold like birthday cards and stuff in. We're painting that pink, and then we're going to throw some lettering on there, and then paint it over top with some raspberry sparkly um, spray paint that's going to give it kind of like a glittery effect. And then we'll remove those letters, and that'll leave this bright pink underneath. So you can see see inside there, we're leaving the inside just kind of shiny. We might paint it white or something, I'm not too certain what we're going to do yet. Over here I'm priming up the base and the post that the mailbox is going to sit on. So just the, just the base and the post there that the mailbox will sit on. So that's been kind of fun and exciting, you know, doing something a little bit different, you know, doing some craft stuff. I got those little tiny mailboxes. Uh, they're like $3.99 in the stores for Valentine's Day. And then after Valentine's Day, of course, 70% uh, off. So I got like four of those little mailboxes. Some of them were like this really light pink. And then I got a white one for my shop, actually. Um, so that way I have, you know, a little something to pull, you know, mail items and stuff out of that, you know, people send me. So I'm going to be doing that, and we're going to get that going. That's going to be kind of fun. It's been a nice change of pace. Uh, my wife had the idea, and so I've been helping her with that. So it's been a lot of fun actually doing a project with my wife. I know you guys want to hear an update on the G2 project, the G2 click pin conversions. I have not made a whole lot of progress on I've gotten another blank um, drilled and glued, or drilled, and I've painted the inside black, and I've glued it in, but I haven't had a chance to turn it up on the lathe yet. I'm currently actually doing some uh, projects some different stuff for a uh, Cub Scout group. I'm actually a Cub Master of a Cub Scout group here in Portland, Oregon. And we've got a big blue and gold coming up. For those of you that don't know, Cub Scouting, Boy Scouting, the anniversary of that is in February. And so I've been doing up some projects for those, uh, trying to get some things turned up for them. That way we can do a silent auction. And in that silent auction, they're actually going to be giving away some of my stuff. So, like the uh, Aurora Borealis pen that I showed you guys last week. 
that's going to be one of the items that I'm going to throw in there. Um, I've got another galaxy pen that I'm going to be doing for them. The theme for the blue and gold is actually space theme, so the galaxy Aurora Borealis stuff is right up that alley. Actually, stand by. I got something to show you. So this is that Aurora Borealis bottle stopper blank that I showed you guys uh, in episode two. I think it was episode two of Shop Talk Tuesday. And so this is how that turned out. I did end up turning the block. Instead of turning it up tall like I normally would with, with a bottle stopper, I actually turned it and put the hole in the bottom and then turned it round. That way I would get these horizontal lines going across and I think it turned out pretty good it actually looks really really cool so there's that turned out really nice we've got a really nice top there which is kind of neat to look at hard to get of course with the lights right above me but yeah it looks pretty nice I'm really happy with how it turned out I was really scared like you know because I knew it was going to be a short blank I knew it wasn't gonna be very tall didn't know what kind of shape I was gonna do when I first started it out I was thinking I'm just all I'm gonna be able to make is just a small sphere and then once I got it I was like you know what I actually I could make like a uh, like a wine glass top and so that's kind of what that shape is just like a wine glass top and and I think it looks really cool I think it's really neat there's actually like you can see some of the black glitters oh my camera's on the other side I don't know if you guys can see that but there's like the, you can see the flash white powders and glitters and stuff there in the black sections uh, you guys probably can't see that. I'll stop trying. <laughs> um, I'll try and get a picture of it up so you guys can actually see because it looks really, really neat. The the little flash white dots that come through look like little twinkling stars and stuff are, are really awesome and I'm really happy with how that turned out. So if you guys are interested in stuff like that, I can actually sell these blanks. Um, let me know in the comment section below or I'll try and remember to throw up a uh, card up here in the corner so you guys can go on and actually uh, purchase those for yourselves. I'll, I'll be happy to do those up for you if there's interest for them. Just go ahead and let me know. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this Shop Talk Tuesday. Like I said, didn't have a whole lot. I mostly wanted to do that demonstration for you guys because um, I've, I've gotten questions about it in the past. You know, uh, Lately, I've been actually using um, some Glue Boost which I will do a full review on for you guys, probably on another Shop Talk Tuesday. I figure I can do reviews and things, but if you guys want product reviews in a separate video, I can absolutely do those as well. Let me know. I'll throw another card up there. You know, just say yay or nay, and uh, and we'll get that going for you. Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop this week. So be sure to check out some of my other videos. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll throw a subscribe button here in the center. Of course, we always got other videos for you on the sides. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out.